Hi, I thought you'd like to see a uh, time lapse of the latest drawing that I've done on Pastel Map. This I've created as a full tutorial for my Ignite members in my membership. And um, I just think I really, really loved it. I really love drawing this gorgeous Labrador puppy. And I think it's really interesting when you see it all come together really, really quickly. How, um, you know, how you actually use the techniques for coloured pencil. And it is all very much about layering. Now, I want to talk about the colours that I've used as well in here, but the layering is really, really key when it comes to drawing with coloured pencils. This is a, I think it's a 17, 19 hour I think it's 17 or 19 hour uh, tutorial start to finish um, and obviously this is 12 minutes um, the colors that I've used we start off with a Pablo and a Pablo apricot as that initial layer and I build the base layers up so I build lots and lots of layers with different oranges creams browns just to get a lovely soft surface that, that we can then start to bring all of those gorgeous details in and I see this as being one of the main challenges with people when they start to use pastel art or any surface actually with colored pencil um it, they dive in with the detail straight away and realistically it's way simpler and easier if you ignore the details to begin with get all of those beautiful uh, base layers in all of your values and everything um, and then your details come really really quickly and simply on the top with pastel map, particularly the dark grey that I'm using here, um, I use a light over light over dark technique. So I'll put light colours in, then I'll bring dark colours in, then light colours, dark colours. And the reason I do that is because it really helps to smooth and blend the colours. As you can see with pastel mat, it's very grainy. So again, with the head area here, starting in exactly the same way as I've done with the ear, just bringing those polychromos and uh, pablos in. I use a range of oranges. So there's terracotta, burnt ochre, um, the Pablo cream here to bring those little hair details in. I also bring in colours like the brown ochre and the raw umber in the polychromos range. They aren't the prettiest of colours, but they balance everything out. So instead of having a very orange uh, or very sort of warm, ready orange dog, you end up with, uh, you know, a very balanced yellow Labrador. Um, <laughs> Not that all the yellow Labradors are balanced, but you know what I mean. Um, so it's really important to bring a mixture of those different colours in to get the balance. Otherwise, you end up with something that looks very orangey or very reddy. Um, so, I, you know, that that's why I've brought in quite a lot of those different colours just to get that lovely balance. Um, I also use a technique that is very much about bringing in the fur texture right from the beginning. So when I bring my first layer of colour in, I will follow the hair direction and I'll bring a little bit of the texture in right from the start. This is, is, is something I do, it's not something that everybody does, but I find it really, really helps me get the feel for the structure of the animal that I'm drawing. Um, I'll also use little tools like a paintbrush or a cotton bud just to help to sort of smooth and blend as well. And then, as well as bringing the details in, I'm very, very conscious of all of the different tonal values that, that appear within, um, you know, a, a subject like this yellow Labrador, where you've got the little dips underneath the eye and in the cheek area. You really want to bring those little areas of um, uh, sort of slightly darker values in there those little tiny nuances again when we come to the nose area it's all very much about building those layers so this is you know this is what you would class an ugly stage i guess where it's just plotting color plotting color plotting color there's no detail in here we can't really see any of the where the hair's going or anything like that it's just working from almost like the inside out then when you've got that lovely base down that's when you can start to actually bring in some of that beautiful detail on the top and it definitely makes it a simpler process if you have that lovely base layer in first um, the pablos i find work really really well the karen dash pablos they work beautifully on pastel mat and particularly over the polychromos 
Light works very, very well over dark, uh, especially when you're using the darker pastel matte like this one is. Um, one of the, I think it's one of the holy grails really of, of a coloured pencil artist is to be able to get white or light colours over the top of dark. And with pastel matte, because it's an abrasive surface, you can you can do that really, really nicely. And you'll see in a second when we start working on the mouth area, um, how you get all of those little light hairs in. And it just works really beautifully. Um, so I've used a, a range of browns, range of oranges, of course, those lovely raw umbers and, um, and brown ochres in there as well. The little nose, uh, I went a little bit wrong. You can see me just amending it there. Scotch Magic Tape is brilliant for use on pastel mat always check to make sure you're not going to take the surface off but really really nice and again when you're working on these sort of pinky noses caput mortem caput mortem violet oranges work so well with those pinky colors as well so cinnamon in there but bringing a little bit of that um, burnt ochre in maybe even a little bit of sanguine in there they work really really nicely um so just coming into the mouth area here we've got the pinks um we've got that really nice dark area now to get this really nice and dark i put caput morton violet in first then i went in with a sharp black and i just used little tiny pencil strokes to get it nice and dark in there and then of course you can see those little white light um or light light hairs coming in over the top um and then i've got a little bit of luminance in there i think it's the sepia 50 uh we've got a bit of salmon um uh, the pinky color from the polychromos range um and it just you know doesn't have to be you know worked at for hours and hours and hours it's really quite simple but it worked really really nicely the lovely thing about pastel mat is that it's very forgiving so I made a mistake here, brought those little spots down a little bit too low in that chin area there. Very easy to sort of remove them and then put them back in again. Literally just dab them out with a kneadable eraser and pop them back in again. Um, and hopefully you won't be able to <laughs> see whether that I went wrong and I've, I've kind of put it right. Um, and then, of course, we've got that lovely shadow. You can see some beautiful greeny colours coming through there. Those are the raw umbers in the luminance range, which are beautiful for shadow work. Um, shadow work again on this side where this big shadow is underneath the ear when you're adding shadows into your colored pencil work and I like to use uh, pictures that have got shadows and stuff like that in I, I just think it, it adds an extra something make sure that you go dark enough it's actually really scary going really dark with the shadows especially on a pale colored animal um, but it's really really important to get those darks in because otherwise they're not really going to look like a shadow it's just going to look like a slightly darker patch of fur uh, and then we come back in again with the uh the apricot apricot pablo um very much a base for this particular dog i used it uh, in most places uh this gorgeous shadow here i absolutely loved drawing I just think if you can bring any kind of lighting into your drawings or use photographs with beautiful lighting, it makes such a massive difference. And then it's just a case of layer, 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 layer. This is a really fabulous tutorial, I think, for really understanding the concept of layering, particularly on pastel mat. Although layering is needed on every surface, regardless of uh, uh, you know of what you're using, when it comes to coloured pencils, it's really really important um, to uh, to layer your colours because it's going to give you a richness, it's going to give you the depth, and it's going to give you all of that lovely structure. Now, this collar um, didn't half give me <laughs> some problems. Oh my goodness, I think I, I think I redid it about three times. Um, but a really fantastic lesson for my students because sometimes when we're drawing, things don't go right and they go wrong. <laughs> not, you know, might not be terribly wrong, but they can go wrong. And what tends to happen is uh, you might lose your temper. And what tends to happen when you lose your temper is you sort of lose a little bit of um, restraint. <laughs> and this is where you rip the paper from your drawing board and you or you scribble on it um, or you rip it up and throw it in the bin. Now, I have never, ever, ever thrown anything in the bin uh, unless it was a very measured 
reason why. You can see I removed it all. I used a uh, Scotch Magic Tape and a Magic Eraser and I removed it all and started again. But I have never removed anything in anger and I've never ripped anything up and I have never scribbled on anything. And I think this is a really lovely lesson for my students that things can go wrong and it doesn't matter. You can use a surface like pastel mat that enables you to keep going to, you know, if you make a mistake, you can rub it out and you can start again. So the rest of the colour I was really, really happy with and I love drawing. I particularly like that little orangey glow on the left hand side of the plastic buckle there. Uh, I really, really enjoyed drawing that. And I think this I think the buckle worked out really, really nicely. I didn't spend hours and hours on it. It isn't beautifully sharp and crisp and, and absolutely perfect. Um, I was listening to a lovely podcast today and I've realised that I am uh, an imperfectionist. So I make do <laughs> and I'm happy to make do. And I don't keep, you know, I don't keep sort of like trying to make everything perfect because perfect doesn't exist. So I was really, really happy with how this turned out. And also the, the little metal work here, when you're drawing metal work, just make sure you have those beautiful, really strong highlights and the very contrasty bits next to it. That way they're going to look silvery. Didn't use any metallics or anything like that in there at all. And then we come down to the bottom area here. And uh, again, it's just all about the layering. There's a lot of brown ochre in there. You can see the brown ochre going in. Terracotta, getting that nice orangey colour. I've got some nougat. Um, if you're wondering what nougat is and you normally call it nugget, um, it's definitely pronounced nougat. <laughs> So call it Nougat from now on. Um, and um, I then moved on to using some of the Luminance pencils, which are the Brown Ochre and the, the Brown Ochre 10 and the Brown Ochre 50. And it, it again, it just goes to show that, you know, particularly if you're following a tutorial, it doesn't matter if you have slightly different pencils. If you've got something that's similar, it, it will be perfect. So I've used some some parts of this I've used the cream Pablo some parts I've used the um the luminance 10 percent completely different colors but they've had they've got a very similar result um the challenge when you get to the bottom half of a portrait like this when it has taken you quite a long time the challenge is to keep going and not lose concentration and just rush it um so for me this is a, a something that I have taught myself over the eight years that I've been drawing. I can't believe it's been eight years since I started drawing. But over the eight years that I started drawing, this is a challenge that I've taught myself so that I don't get to the bottom of a piece and then start rushing. So I hope you like this. These are the whiskers going in. Cream Pablo worked really, really nicely. And there is gorgeous Hugo. Hugo.